Hi guys, welcome back. It's Matt Chat episode 414, featuring an interview and play uh, through of Atom, A-T-O-M RPG. Uh, this is a, uh, a, new ver a new Fallout game, basically, a spiritual successor, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but instead of being set in America or the West, uh, this is coming uh, to the post-apocalyptic uh, nuclear holocaust scenario from the other side, uh, from the Soviet... Uh, and Russian side of the uh, the Cold War. So it's really, really fascinating concept, and it's really great if you're a fan of the original Fallout <laughs> games uh, 1 and 2 and looking for uh, more of the same uh, in that classic turn-based uh, format. Uh, now, i am also be interviewing here Anton. Uh, he's one of the writers, one of the uh, crew uh, that are making this game. Uh, so he shares his perspectives, his thoughts, and also a couple of uh, useful hints uh, for us as we play this game. It's uh, currently in early access and is scheduled to be released officially in December, uh, hopefully in time for Christmas. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Anton and Atom RPG. All right, folks, I am here recording this live with Anton uh, Krishnikov. He's one of the uh, writers, quest designers. He does dialogue. He works the look and design. He's, it sounds like it's quite an inclusive team uh, from Adam Team. And the game we're going to be playing today is called Adam RPG. And uh, as you'll see, it's really, to my mind, the uh, maybe what Fallout 3 should have been. <laughs> I'd wanted to stay faithful to the uh, Tim Kaine Bjarsky classics that we all uh, know and love. But anyway, I want to welcome uh, Anton to the show. How are you doing, Anton? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? Uh, doing fantastic. Okay, so let's uh, just get into the game. I'm just looking here at the at the opening, and uh, one of the really fascinating things to me about this game is that while yes, it's kind of a Fallout spiritual successor, whatever you want to call it. It's actually from the opposite uh, perspective, right? So the first games, are, I guess, are set in America. Uh, this one's yeah. set. Uh, I don't know if it's, you have a particular setting. I know it's uh, somewhere in the Soviet Union, right? Or... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, whenever, in the game, we never mention what the place where it takes, where the game takes place. But actually we have, like, in our heads, we have a, particular place in the Soviet Union and uh, today's Russia mm. where where it takes place actually and you guys I believe are based in Latvia uh, we're based all around the world so it's uh, Russia Ukraine uh, Latvia also yeah and Poland yeah, so it's just fun for me growing up as a kid in the 80s watching all these movies like Red Dawn and <laughs> playing Fallout uh, just a, it's, it's really a unique experience to get to see this from uh, you know, another perspective. That's really cool. Okay, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new character, Anton. You just tell me what you want sure. <laughs> as we go along here. Uh, I'm well, already, I, just... I already think it's a better game than uh, the Fallout 76, and I haven't even created a character yet. So. <laughs> okay, mm. so it looks like I've got quite a, few, uh, quite a few things I need to select. Can you tell me a little bit about creating a character here? Yeah, well... Uh... Basically, it depends how you want to play the game. So, for example, if you want to have, uh, like, uh, I don't know, if you want to know more lore of, of the game or have more quests or, I don't know, uh, if you want to see something interesting in, in the conversations, then probably it's better to pick higher personality and uh, attention, intellect, possibly. But also, you know, some of the fights could be quite challenging, so... <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's hard to recommend. Uh, it doesn't seem like the kind of game where being a nice person is that what I want to be in this game, or should I? Can I be like a jerk? It depends. It depends <laughs> oh, this is a, a scumbag. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hate, oh no, I don't. Like a real scumbag. I could probably. This is probably pretty accurate, right? What what a bore. <laughs> uh, I guess I guess probably. Uh, yeah, we'll go nice. You said attention to? 
Yeah, yeah, also maybe attention and probably intellect. So uh, intellect. how it works, for example, intellect, it gives you um, variance in your dialogue. So like additional, additional lines of dialogue that you can answer to characters. And uh, personality, it usually uh, governs how characters will um, um, perceive you. So, for example, you can ask, you know, like, oh, tell me some, tell me about this and that uh, to a certain character. But uh, if you have lower uh, personality, it will be like, no, 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 we won't talk to you. Was like, uh, it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, and attention is basically, uh, for example, like a character could speak, uh, I don't know, like a... a top of my head like uh, example from a game so a character could speak with a certain like accent and you can like you can i don't know well <laughs> it, 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 it's not really correct because attention <laughs> kind of like you can see that but uh, in dialogues you can also like hear certain things and um uh, like I don't know, like accents and stuff like that i know anton you're the dialogue one of the dialogue guys, so you're probably pretty sensitive to dialogue, right? But how important is it here? I mean, is it some? Is there is there a heavy emphasis in this game on dialogue? Should I be really worried about that? Well, there. Um, interesting question because yeah, there, there is emphasis, I guess, on dialogue, and uh, most most of quests you can do without fighting. That was like that was a big deal for us, so that you can play the game without like a, as a pacifist you can do a pacifist run so not all quests but the most quests i don't want to uh, be a pacifist <laughs> <laughs> but you know that that's that's an option that's an option also so um uh but at the same time like i don't know i'm pretty like uh for me it's kind of like how people want to play it you know like if, sure. if somebody don't want to pay attention to that stuff fine by me <laughs> you can fight uh, with people, you can be rude to people that, you know, uh, maybe it will screw something in your game. Maybe you will be, won't be able to, you, you know, like do some quests or maybe some tasks will be, tasks will be closed or, you know, all that stuff. But still, the game will be, the game is finishable. You can still, you know, like play it uh, in that style. So I don't know, like, how you want to play it for me? <laughs> I usually when I try. Yeah, I mean, to play, I just want to kill some rats. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what. <laughs> that's tough, but it's just a matter world. of how I want to kill the rats. Do I want to <laughs> throw something at throw them something at them? Uh, shotguns are these uh, like the shotguns? Is that controlled by dexterity? What uh, controls it's, the aim? Uh, it's it's attention, attention, attention. and yeah, dexterity. Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. In 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 the final version, uh, when we will release it in December, uh, we will have like a lot of pop ups that will you know explain more about uh, the mechanics of the game. So, for example, right now, like you know, you can see like health, uh, what is this uh, dodge and stuff like that, and that's not very like helpful. Like people who don't know what that's mean, or people who are not you know like versed in RPGs, they could be like, eh, what what is this? <laughs> Wasn't but, that the, the original Fallout game, if I recall correctly? Maybe I'm thinking of Wasteland, but weren't there a lot of skills they had that they never actually used? Yeah, like forging, I think. Uh, forging documents. <laughs> there was this skill. Uh, no, I think I think all of the all of the skills that you see here are pretty much usable. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Okay, what? I guess these are just the portraits, huh? It's, yeah, yeah, just general portraits, and uh, the name is random right now, but you can click it and change it wherever you want. You'll, you can also change your biography because, you know, <laughs> that's a cool option. It's like it doesn't do anything in the game, but, you know, <laughs> you can write your own. This is a pretty good look at portraits. It's, uh, some, some of those portraits are uh, Kickstarter backers, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. This is old Vladimir. Is he one of the? <laughs> Let's go. The name is uh... random, so it's it's not the names of the backers exactly, but um, oh yeah. So so distinctions. Again, like in the final game, we will have uh, a lot more of them. So basically, it's you know like your pros and cons of your character, like mm, you know like every, uh, you can pick two of them, or you can pick one, or you can if you don't want to play with them, you 
you can just keep them. Like, it doesn't Sickest matter. education. <laughs> Child prodigy. Glutton. So I could be a glutton with sex appeal. Yep. Yeah. That's that's a that sounds like a fun that's combo. Cool. <laughs> I'm sexier than the average glutton. Oh boy, here we go. Yep. Uh so what I is the normal uh, really normal or is it more like I should go easy or do I wanna You know, somebody yeah. that's played Fallout I don't I think I just played that on the normal difficulty. I think, yeah, normal is a good, you know, good choice for the first playthrough. Survival, not so much, but <laughs> although, you know, like... I can't ever play like, on easy. I, I refuse to play a game if I have to put it on easy, because that just makes me feel crappy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, you know, it's all about having an option. <laughs> well, this looks pretty cool. So yeah, a bit of, you know, like backstory of what Adam, your character is doing in their game, game world. The war caused by the imperialist conquerors. Is this all Our actual footage from the, gathering the archives? Government archives or something? Motherland. We well, have not that, it's not that cool. Like, <laughs> it's not like secret all government all archives or something. But yeah, yeah, it's actual footage from uh, uh, Soviet land. Union. Late Soviet ago, Union and uh, yeah, late Soviet Union. This one was actually from uh, a thing uh, from the Chernobyl disaster. Human resources oh, wow. are limited. Yep. Therefore, the standard procedure is to send out but a few agents to investigate. This is this always problem. one of my favorite parts of the old you Fallout the games. Is this, uh, this the sort of historical stuff we put in? Troops had an yeah. Important quest. Uh, so, in that sense, like uh, I think you know, like um, Fallout games, there. According to our data, it a bit of like near the village sci fi, they have. I don't know, I don't know what's the correct term. They're the genre. Yeah, yeah, I heard it described as kind of futurism, like 50s futurism or something like that. Yeah. Like, I think like robots. Yeah. So, this game doesn't have the sort of robots and laser guns. Uh, it, it has, it has, uh, but. Um, it's not, you know, like, it's not a sci-fi world per se, like, uh, all the sci-fi stuff is a bit, you know, like, more grounded, I guess. At some point, I'm going to have to go to my Twitter account and my Facebook page, because I had a lot of questions coming in from fans of the show. Yeah. Uh, just one I'm thinking of, I'm trying to remember who asked it, I'll have to look that up later. But he was asking, uh, <clears throat> he was saying, you know, a lot of us, we love, uh, role-playing games who kind of dream about making one like this i mean what is involved in making i mean i can just i can tell already that this is very slick production i mean it looks good i mean it looks very professional <laughs> i mean it's commercial quality what can you say i mean that's just not something anybody can do right or, or is it oh it's a good question again like i think Like, you need to have a certain amount of determination to do, uh, you know, anything, I guess. Uh, so, like, right now we're, uh, because it's pre-release, we're, we're like in this uh, constant constant crunch mode, you know, like. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, I mean, basically, a, how many guys are, I mean, how big is your team? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's eleven people or something. Like eleven that. people. So that's a pretty decent size, I would think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. It, I think it's absolutely enough. Plus minus eleven people. Yeah, it's more than enough. Yeah. So how long have you been working on this? Uh, so the idea of the game was actually from back back from two thousand and eight, actually. Uh, but it doesn't didn't go anywhere back then because you know it was. You know, most most of the guys who were, uh, who had the idea, they were still like either in school or in or in uh, like university. So you know, it was just like a fun project or something. Sure. Uh, so yeah, so it kind of died down, and then in 2015, again, like it's reemerged. So the idea was still always there. So and uh, in 2015 started like this development that you, what you see right now was made in from 2015 to this moment so the game 
All yeah, right, so did. let's get into this. So let's see. Uh, from uneven shadows that are dancing around your campfire emerges a well-built man in his 30s, dressed in a musky khaki <laughs> uniform. Now, Mario, I'm liking this interface here. Looks very, uh, you know, that's sure to bring a smile to your face if you are a fan of the one of the games, uh, Fallout. Yep. Let's see. Well, 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 what do we have here? Hope I'm not bothering you, comrade. Oh, there we go, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> Your first clue is not going to be exactly like Fallout. Right? See, the, <laughs> the man stops before you, rubs his hands as if to warm himself. Or to show you a formidable brass knuckle on his left hand. You look like a tourist, man. Nice tent, clothes in good condition, without holes or tears, and so much other stuff. You know, why do I get the feeling I'm not starting off too well here? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a classic stuff. <laughs> uh, lot of games sizing up your equipment i, I kind of like it. i feel i feel like i'm gonna get to fight right away though i like it must be hard to carry such a weight on your shoulders <laughs> okay stranger's face breaks into an ominous smile I mean, me and my pals could help you well not for free of course but for a very manageable price what say you uh, you finally notice four human figures hidden in the dark of the night yet classic ambush classic a hold up right mugging uh, you yep. still had some doubts about what is transpiring now because now it's becoming painfully clear <laughs> you're about to get robbed. <laughs> you know, this has yes. this has an English teacher. I'm glad to see that the uh, the apostrophes there on the it's. You know, I notice this even in a lot of uh, you know AAA games lately. They don't they don't know how to punctuate anything. Oh, we we, we have we have a couple of <laughs> we have a couple of these things there also, but uh, you know. We're, like hopefully, hopefully we will, you know, in time we will kind of make the translation. You know, I won't say like ideal, but. I guess so. It looks like it's already given me some of these. Op I assume that the options here within the brackets are some that I, are some that are unique because I adjusted my attributes a certain way, right, or picked a skill. Uh, 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 no, actually, it it shows that uh, we decided from like when we started making. Uh, dialogues we first we thought like maybe we should you know like if you have certain like we shouldn't show like skill that or um or statistic that helps you you know with this with this option we're speaking this option but then we kind of we, we did it and people i won't say like didn't understand but you know like felt um like they didn't actually know what you know like um how to say that like Oh god damn it! You don't I, want to I make don't... it too clear, I guess, how this is gonna go. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, like if they wanted to, uh, they didn't know. Like you have a speechcraft skill. Should you, you know, like put some points in it, or shouldn't you? Because you're you're not really sure what option, you know, helps you with that. Uh, so we decided, yeah, to show it. Like this one. This one is uh, governed by your speechcraft skill. This one is governed by your strength statistic, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I think I'm gonna just go for the. You chose the wrong person, mate. I was Ooh. trained to deal with the hostile locals. <laughs> well, you know, it's I it's it's protection for a reason. So, <laughs> get him, boys! Oh, here we go! Here we go! To to combat. Oh, jeez! <laughs> Got the blood come spattering out of his jaw. <laughs> oh, this probably isn't looking too good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me let me see. So I can I got a fifty percent chance to hit him with my fist. Do I have any other weapons or? You have you actually have a AK forty seven. Uh, like if you press I think Alt, try pressing Alt. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could see that. Yep, you have like um, uh, items that you can use. So there's your backpack. Uh, no, no, no. That's that's your like inventory, and there's uh, like behind the log there. There's this uh, your backpack, and uh, I think an AK-47 that they give you gave you at the base, oh, atom I base. Can I, can I reach this, or should I just punch uh, it? You should you should get closer, a bit closer. How do I walk there? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, what happened? <laughs> I get. I guess you're getting a tax of opportunity on me. <laughs> oh God. Oh, jeez. Take the loot, baby. Yep. And there there ends the life of 
Good Matt Barton. Huh? You would think so. <laughs> oh, my head, those assholes. They took everything. Or maybe they loved something. They That's did, they did, but not a lot. <laughs> I kind of feel like uh, uh, Tim Kaine must have felt when he saw Fallout on 76, right? <laughs> Okay, you said I press alt to like get a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it oh. looks like it shows, uh, you know, basically uh, stuff that you can use somehow or take. Okay, what did I pick up? What is that? Empty canteen. It's a Soviet army canteen. Okay, that's good, I guess. Usually water is a pretty useful thing to have. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, these are really good graphics, too. And somebody was telling me something about a, a Russian car that was one of the best things they'd ever seen. Like, like, oh, uh, maybe, maybe they were talking about a car that you can that you can actually get to yourself in the game. Not right now, but in the final version, uh, we already have the car. We have the model. We have like the necessary dialogues for that. So yeah, you will have the players will have a car for to travel. Um, so if you want to try to. Um, I gotta get inside this box, man. It's locked. You can hit it. You can try actually hit it. But uh, if you wanted to unlock it, you you need to hold the left mouse button on it. Oh. Yep. Ah. You're dope. All right. So un unlock. I guess. Yep. You broke the lock, and I gained five experience points. Then I got some electrical save. What is this? Is there a craft? I assume there's a crafting yep. system. Yeah. There, there's crafting system. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I got my electrical tape, got a spoon, <laughs> I'm not feeling too well equipped. I guess I got that canteen. I guess I could whack somebody with that, right? <laughs> you can actually take a, a brick, I think, behind that uh, uh, destroyed barn over there. There will be a brick that you can use as a weapon. Ah. See, this is the, the big advantage, guys, of playing with the, one of the developers. You know, they can give you these little... Little clues. Yep, little tips. I think on one of the barrels. Yeah, it stands on the barrel. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It's on the barrel? Yep, yep, yep. Here it is. Oh, oh not, not. I see over there. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Two bricks. Three bricks. I got it. I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I think you can throw them also. And uh, you can try crafting, actually, right now. So... If you if you if you click at uh, crafting in your inventory, yes. So you can try. I don't know if it will work. Try taking spoon, or uh, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, put spoon there, then put uh, brick. Spoon. Uh, brick. Yep, and electric tape. And let's <laughs> try crafting it. What is this gonna make? Whoa! What? It's a ship. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, okay. Yeah, that, that sounds like that's going to be useful. How do I equip that son of a gun? Uh, you know, classic stuff. Yep, just take it in your slot number one or number two. Yeah, there we're talking. Now all I need is to find those guys again. You actually you actually have such an option, yeah. Right. To have your revenge. I must have my revenge. So this looks like the map. Is this? Uh, so the map for this area is uh, is not existent, but all other locations uh, they have their own maps, of course, mini maps. This is like a first like starting locations a location. It's very small. Uh, it doesn't even have like um, exit to the global map. It's yeah, I'm kind of wondering that. Like, what do I do now? Uh, you sh you need to go to to the other side, like follow the road, follow, follow the road, and do that, do that little bridge over there. Yep. Huh. Whoa! Oh, nope, cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this looks sort good. Of, sort of Baldur's Gate one style. This is what I love about these, this post-apocalyptic setting. You know, you, see, you just see some old sign or old bus. kind of makes you wonder, like, what happened? What was this? What did this look like before? Yeah, actually, actually, our, 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 our um, artist for the game, he's very keen on 
not all, not only our artists, but also uh, our modeler who makes um, the location, 3D models of the location. They are very keen on, you know, like telling small like stories. Uh, on Beautiful the, like, stuff, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like something that's not even like relevant to certain quests or something, but uh, maybe, you know, like a keen-eyed player can see it and like, oh, hmm something you know there's a story behind yeah, see, that I, I love that kind of stuff i don't want somebody just to have to talk to me like i'm two years old and have to well here's what this means and here's what happened you know just let me figure some stuff out right yeah yeah yeah, exactly okay so what do we got here so that's the first village uh that, that you've a, been sent what is that a chicken yeah yeah can i stab the chicken or is that not a good idea it's it's, it's, it's from a skyrim school of chicken Okay, I guess I should go talk to this guy. The villagers are very protective of them, so... Strongly built man aged around 30, wearing a weathered military jacket, holds a large gun. He seems affable. Okay. <laughs> Probably welcome a conversation with a random stranger. <laughs> but, so Yeah, you get kind of chatty when you have a large gun and you. <laughs> so here's an interesting uh, sm small little detail if you will be like uh, right now if you will will be rude to him then uh, he won't talk to you so but this is the guy who will actually tell you the location of your uh, like your next story assignment where you need to go so but if you will so be rude to him, I, if i piss him off it's game over then no 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 it's not game over you can find it on the global map on your own or, or if you have high enough charisma, you can talk to him again, and uh, he will, you know, you can say like, "Oh, sorry, man, you know, I said some bad stuff to you, but maybe." <laughs> and uh, if you have high My enough person, Moi kota. Yeah. Oh, I could be nice. Yeah, let's see, spits out his blade of grass, removes his hands from his rifle. Okay, nice to meet you, Jan. Looking for someone. I probably should have paid more attention to that intro sequence because I don't actually know. <laughs> Am I looking for someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been actually sent uh, to the wastes uh, to find. Uh, you're you're like a part of secret secret organization that helps uh, uh, the survivors in the wasteland to you know kind of rebuild their lives. So and um, uh, this organization actually sent like a, a expedition to the wasteland to find a certain bunker. Bunker three is seventeen. So and the, the expedition just vanished. So you're one of the guys who were sent to not even save them, but you know, just to gather some information what yeah. happened to them. Recon mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy disappeared somewhere. Steblev Steplev was his surname. He loves a drink from time to time. Sometimes even sometimes even goes on a bender. Uh, I guess he got lost somewhere. Pretty drunk. <laughs> bragging about becoming a millionaire. <laughs> uh, maybe so. Where would he get a million rubles? Something shady. Yeah, this is good stuff. A real handyman would be most welcome here nowadays. <laughs> okay. Better go. Uh, so, I probably don't want to start attacking people here in this village. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What would be a good place to go? Is, is that the bar? Yeah, yeah. You know, I can always recognize the bar. I couldn't even read that sign, but just I had a feeling. I had a feeling. This is the <laughs> a plump, red-faced man, age twenty-five. The portrait, the portrait is actually a work, work in progress. Uh, he's not looking twenty-five at the moment. Well, he's, he's had a hard life. Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. But you know, we're we're remaking some some of the portraits for the final release. You know, making them a bit better. Let's see, what kind of booze can we get here? Pre the good stuff. Port wine. In USSR, this was the name given to any fortified wine. Huh. Uh, Pre-war vodka? There we go, beer. Six. I don't know, maybe I should go vodka. You think I should go vodka? Do I? <laughs> I don't even know if I go sporting. <laughs> Not at the moment, yeah, but you actually need a bottle of uh, some strong... Uh, liquor in this village because you can actually get a trade uh, there's like a small quest like uh, most of the quests in this village at the start at least are you know like pretty easy they should like 
they kind of ease the player in the game world. So it's like, oh, bring me this, you know, like, uh, kill a rat or something like that. But <laughs> Yeah, but, we need to get to that rat. I think it's kind of fun that you've got the these little history tidbits in here, like the cassettes. The production of compact cassettes in USSR was started in 1960 in Tallinn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll have to... Oh. I can sell you beer. I can sell you some spirits. Maybe I have to earn the beer, right? Do some odd jobs. Do some odd jobs, yeah. So, uh, he will give you... He will give you one quest, but he will also... you ask him like if you have any work here, uh, he will send you to his sister. And uh, if you have high enough uh, personality at the start, you can actually talk to her, skipping this whole dialogue with him, you know, asking about. Um, uh, so he would give you a recommendation for his sister, and just she will just talk to you. But right now, I think with personality six, she will be like, "Oh, sorry, I, like I can't talk to you right now." <laughs> so you need you need his recommendation. What is this? Uh, the bartender hands you a small square of thick paper. On it, written in a formidable cursive, are the words, The owner of this document, Rachinko, may obtain a copy of The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, translated to Russian, <laughs> after handing over the receipt. Oh, that's my, you know, any quest where I have to find a copy of The Lord of the Rings can't be all bad. <laughs> no, that's actually an interesting quest, this one. And, uh, uh we- we actually had some comments that you know, like um, there's there's like uh, translated to Russian by a certain Bobier, uh, and people like people don't know. Maybe that's a reference to something. It's actually it's actually a first I think first translation of Lord of the Rings uh, to Russian uh, that was done in huh. I think seventies something like that. That's really cool that you put in all this historical stuff. Do I want to go here? Uh, that's global map. I mean, we're we're looking at the game, of course. Like, <laughs> I just want to get global into map. a little combat where I don't get my butt whooped. Ooh, yeah, combat <laughs> combat could be brutal. <laughs> oh, this is neat. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, I like this a lot better where you can actually see the guy walking. You can actually, you can actually also um, uh, wait a second. I think it's in the right. Uh, upper right corner uh you can click oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> okay that's that's bad news <laughs> oh no not again <laughs> surely I got, so, I got a shiv now though i mean i just <laughs> shiv, these, shiv these bastards up okay is it my turn it's just one of them right i got this cover what do you say i got this <laughs> well maybe maybe Oh. Oh damn. Okay. That's it. I gotta get some. Oh, he's kicking me while I'm down. Yeah, oh, they're playing dirty. I didn't get shooting me. What the? Oh, well, that's a good opportunity to see the death screen, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh my God, you're dead. Poisonous winds of the wasteland will soon erase. So you mean to tell me I'm actually going to have to pay attention and put some thought into how I'm playing this? <laughs> well, I'm afraid so. <laughs> well, we can't leave it there. Yeah, be uh, a save so, game here. I want to get into a fight I might actually win. So what do I? Where do I need to go? You can actually go back to Otrevna, to the village, okay. and um, uh, you can. The fights, uh, you know, like there are a couple of mutants around the village, so uh, on this location so that you can pick the, pick the fight with, uh, and they're not very not, not very scary. So, and there's also a couple of, you know, like small little uh, stashes with loot that you can find. That you know, like adventures that uh, came through this village, kind of left here, you know, hide it from everybody. So there you could find a more or less good knife. Oh, and stuff. What is this? Oh, okay. That's the first one. Oh, uh, it's like a spider. Is it? Is it? Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a, yeah. That's a spider. So. Oh, oh. So they're not very. Oh, okay. So now you're using uh, uh, like a targeted, targeted. Um, stab. Um, yeah, targeted stab. But. 
You can also just stab, yeah. <laughs> it was on targeting uh, anyway. I guess I'm already... I think I used up all my, my points there. Let's well, see, what do I do? Just uh, get an enter, maybe? Or? You can just, yeah. Sheila Borg. Like a space or a turn button. Oh, that's a tricky little devil. Yeah. Jeez, come on. Stay still, damn it! Hit space. I think I'm getting a little too excited. I got stuff coming off the shelf here. <laughs> Forty-one percent chance. Come on, you could do it. Come on, what come on, hell? Vladimir. <laughs> Vlad. Maybe, maybe try uh, target certain body parts. Maybe you will have a better chance then. That's good. Okay, so how does this work again? I hold the button down. You just hold the button. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I think hitting the torso. I think the chance is a bit better. Uh, yeah. Ah, got it. Here it goes. <laughs> that was a good animation too. Just crinkly. And uh, yeah, yeah, the, the spider net. So you can't you can't collect uh, like loot from mutants like spiders or like giant ants and stuff like that before you have like a necessary skill for that. Oh. And you can learn this skill here in the village actually. Uh, a... But for that you need a bottle of strong liquor. <laughs> uh, good luck getting that liquor there. It's not, you know, like if you find a couple of stashes, do a couple of quests, you can do it easily. I like a game that doesn't make it too easy. You know, you want to be able to see that progression, your character getting tougher. And... Yeah. So, like, a lot of people actually said to us that, you know, like, uh,. I mean, like, the game the game is um, hard, uh, like on the normal difficulty, but not as hard as some games. So, like, I think it's people say that it's harder than, I guess, Fallout at certain places, or at least the uh, first Fallout. Uh, but, remember, uh, but yeah, even that little fight with the rat at the beginning of that could be pretty tough sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, like what just saying, like, basically for me, I think I think the game is. Like pretty much like Fallout in in difficulty, but I don't right. know. Some people say it's 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 uh, a bit harder than Fallout, but a bit uh, um, not a bit. To, what happened to my shift? Ah, it's broken. Yeah, because it's a makeshift weapon. Ah, no, no, crap! Can I make another one? Uh, if you have the resources, sure. Can I but grab you the can rest? also. You can also search the surrounding areas. Maybe you will find uh, a normal knife. Damn that shiv. I can't believe it broke. What yeah, they could do that. Scolia worker. Oh, I'm just trying to punch a bug. That doesn't sound like a good, an effective uh, weapon. <laughs> effective combat. <laughs> Come on, swat his ass. Come on. You know, I think I can. I'm hitting more with my fist than I was with the shiv. That's. Maybe because you have like a higher, um, like martial arts skill. Yeah, I'm pretty badass with a bow. <laughs> yeah, I need a bow. It looks like I got a little mushroom here. Yeah, yeah. So you need that mushroom for a quest, but you can also, you know, skip that part and just eat it. <laughs> well, now that you told me it's for a quest, I'm not going to eat it. Uh, you know. If I ate it, I probably wouldn't be able to do the quest, right? <laughs> hey, check this out. That's a, that's a giant ant. Yeah, Mermic. Well, I mean, you've got a good variety of enemies here already. You know, it's not just the same old bug over and over. We've got ants, a wasp, a, a spider. Yeah, well, you know, like, uh, still, you know, it's, it's starting area, so enemies are a bit more, like, basic. It's, you know, like, giant bugs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, like, giant bugs, uh, I guess it's a good... It's a good job for our QA team. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so. Uh, yeah. But then when you will venture in certain places in the wasteland, you will find, you know, some quite interesting monsters. Look at the way this thing dodges. Look at that. I mean, that's a pretty good animation. Oh, come on. Uh, I hate it when they're almost dead, then you just could not land that last blow. Got him. Right. Here it goes. 
Okay, so yeah, I guess I need to get that skill that lets me. Oh, there's another mushroom. Yep. Yeah, see, I'm the type of guy. If there's something I can collect, I want to. Yeah, but. Now, look at this. So I, I think I see what, what's going to happen here, right? The, I'm going to get some kind of radiation if I go creeping over there. It's actually toxic. You will have, like, we have two, two kinds of uh, poison. So it's uh, toxic uh, poison and uh, radiation poisoning. So this one is toxic. You know, that um, just doesn't sound like too good of an idea. Maybe I need to find a stick or something. To... Yeah, actually, you're close to the place where there's this, um, this, this, this um, place when it's a hidden knife, actually. I don't, I don't see it right now, but it's somewhere close, I think. Somewhere close, huh? Yeah, maybe. Is it in a tree or under a rock? No, it's like it's like in this little like uh, mud hill, you know, like a little mud hill. We're probably yeah. giving away a big secret, big spoiler though. Now that I know it's there, though, a mud hill. <laughs> where the? Oh, he's going where I point here. Oh, that's cool. How do I get back? Is there a button I can press to jump back to him? Uh, home. I think home. Okay, a mud hill. Oh, no. Come on. Where'd you put it? <laughs> you don't even remember. It's it's embarrassing. I don't remember myself. It's somewhere, <laughs> it's somewhere in this area. I'm pretty sure. It's hidden. It. Well, you're probably not supposed to find it, right? You can actually have some, uh, uh, get some loot here, so... Yeah. I can, How do I, I can show what you can do. So get in there. There's, there's, there's okay. a couple of secrets in here. So, like for example, now you click it, and in your log, I think it's like interesting. Oh, what what about is doing here? He doesn't do anything, but you know, try and press and pressing out, and uh, you know, so you just such just a rickety bad. Yeah, but try uh, try try pressing uh, out the button. So. It would oh. highlight. Yep, you can see. Yeah, on the wall. Something's oh, on the wall. What? Oh, it's a switch. Light switch. So there's lights. And it now, if you use the bed, it will actually. Like, he knows that there's something. There, there's like a, a basement behind that bed. Damn, oh, it's like I hit the mother load. Here, got a log. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, gunpowder, so. What is that? Waste paper. <laughs> okay, let's see about this bed. What the? Here it goes. Ah. Ah, I like the look of this. It's like a secret bunker. Yep. Oh, jeez. Yeah, but it's not that easy. Well, you, you, <sighs> still, you still can try to unlock it. Uh, using your skills, but I think you need to have high enough, very high skill to do it. Damn, that's safe. There's got to be a combination around here some, somewhere. There, There is a combination. Not here specifically, but there is. Well, we won't spoil it. Where's your so, sword? Quite the toy. You must be a nutcracker, right? But where's your sword? Is that a nutcracker? Yep. <laughs> what the hell's a nutcracker doing here? <laughs> Nutcracker. It's 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 a sort of like a Easter egg secret here. You can actually get his sword, but um, I, I don't know. Well, should I tell you how, how you can get it, or maybe uh, I shouldn't? I don't want to. want to give too much away. That's pretty cool, though. I mean, you can, you you're starting to see like how you guys think, where you hide things, and give a little indication. Of, Maybe you should go explore a little bit more. Maybe there's something there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like that. Uh, I always thought that was a great game design. I don't like the games where you, it just basically tells you everything. Yeah, basically, like, we, 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 we always wanted, like, always kind of had in mind that, you know, like, Atom should be a game that, you know, that shouldn't give you all the information. Oh! <laughs> I can't <laughs> We found him. <laughs> that's that's the rat. That's oh the goddamn God. rat. I don't want to. <laughs> I wish I had my shit. Is there, can I make another weapon real quick, or am I stuck with this? 
I mean, maybe there's a lot more into I don't remember what what uh, resources you've had. I got a log. Uh, can, I, can I take the uh, log? You know what you can do? What? You have an empty bottle. So if you if you use crafting, click on crafting. Uh, we can try it. We can try to make it. So uh, yeah, drag the bottle. Drag one bottle there and uh, drag a brick. Uh, a brick. One brick. Yeah. And let's try to craft it. No. Okay. Maybe. You accidentally dropped the bottle. Come on. <laughs> what the, uh, Vladimir! Should I try it again? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, See, you know, yeah, like you could roll the bottle and use it as a weapon. <laughs> uh, the plastic bottle? Man. Nah, plastic bottle doesn't work like that. Oh, well, maybe we'll just... Can I kick? Yeah, sure. How do I change this? Uh, just, uh... Uh, I think left mouse button. Ah, no, 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 no. Um, uh, like this round button uh, close to the... No, 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 round button. Yep, yep, ah, here, here you go. go. <laughs> I'm going to kick you, you little... Look at that rat over there, God. Uh, he just, he wants it, man. Uh, oh, what? I, I didn't invite you to the party. <laughs> not, not bad, like, not like, bad. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh no! Not enough action points. But you can all, always do like um, just little it. tactics to anger the anger the monsters and then lead them to the guard <laughs> at the gates of no, the village. No, these are my rats. Those are the guards. <laughs> Screw the guards. They're mine. Back to kick. <laughs> Is he still? Oh, nice long death sequence. Yeah, that's what you want with a rat. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe. I... Yeah, here's where a little strategy might come in. Anton, so should I like move back, let him come to me? Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's better to kite them. So maybe yeah, to move over, back a little bit. Kite them over there. Yep. So they would. Yeah, that. Oh, that... Yeah, exactly. Okay. No oh. oh. Oh, yeah. Donk! Damn this... Okay, so... You have seven hit points, right? Okay, okay. Oh, man, I hope I don't die. No, it's not a problem. If you don't die in this battle, you can um, uh, heal yourself in the village. <sighs> I just won't die, that rat! He's trying to come at me. And the kick is... I cannot land a kick on this thing. I'm having more luck with the punch. <laughs> or at least that thing's not hitting me. Okay, come on, come on. Do this. He's almost dead. Come on. Okay. Come on, Vladimir. Oh, you... Mm, Vladimir. God! <laughs> oh, God damn it. Oh, how many hit points do I have left? Where does it have my hit points at? Uh, near, near the icon of the weapon that you're using right now. Oh, four? Yep. Oh, only four. If I, if I get, if I die... <laughs> to this rat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got him, alright. Now you can, now you can start running away. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that would be a sense. Run away? You could look at this guy. He had the nerve. <laughs> To come over here and interrupt my little rat party. No, he's he's going down. I swear they're to actually God. like he will die. Uh, and bees are actually quite friendly with the rats. We even have um, uh, it would be like enemies on the global map who are like strange symbiosis of rats and the giant wasps. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, you know what? That wasp got me. Have you, as life drains from your dying body, reflect upon your deeds and wonder. Oh, <laughs> wait, it went away too quick. <laughs> oh, I'm still liking that, that music. All right, anyway, Anton, it's been a lot of fun. Is there anything else you wanted to point out about the game while we got her going here? 
Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's. I mean, we don't want to give any secrets away, but I mean. Sure, 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 sure. Like, how much big stuff have we? Is there a lot of big stuff we haven't even gotten to yet? Or. Well, there's actually a lot of secrets in the game. As I said, like we we like the game to be, like. We wanted the people to explore the game, so the world is, uh, you know, it has a lot of secrets, and when I say secrets, like, you actually, like, adventure-style secrets, let's say it like that, you know? Like, oh, like find the, like a puzzle to solve? Like puzzles and stuff like that, sure, sure, sure. So, um, we will love that kind of stuff, and some of them are quite, uh, you know... Uh, most of them, like, people who played the Early Access version right now on Steam, uh, they found most of them, but there are still like a couple <laughs> secrets that nobody found. What's going on? Oh my god, I got back oh, in the same scenario. And... God, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the same scenario too, this damn rat. No, it's the same is that the same wasp? It could be. Uh, you know we probably should Oh no, I'm screwed, man. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the same. Yeah, I got that's all the, same. the rats. You know, there's one thing about dying, though. You can always come back and play, you know, kill the rats again. You know, though, I, you probably don't want to. I probably don't want to <laughs> spend all the time on this. <laughs> How do I get back to uh, my safe? There we go. Yeah. There we go. No, don't delete it. Uh, did I delete it? Oh, there we go. Oh, anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> so what were you saying? <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, you know, like, the game has a lot of secrets, a lot of secret ways uh, how you can approach uh, quests and stuff like that. Um, you know, some of some of them are not... Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Forgot the language. <laughs> some of them are not very, that... Um, mm. Linear? No, no, no. Um, like, none of them are linear. It's that, that uh, you know, some of them are... Uh, the ways that you can you can do a quest are not as uh, you know like not always obvious. Uh, so ah, like there are a couple quest. of obvious ways that you can do something, and there's a couple of small like uh, small little ways that you can do something, but not a lot of people maybe. Oh, I, don't know. I see what you're saying. So it's like there's sort of a obvious way that typical yeah, dumbass yeah. would do, uh, but then no, there's like some super clever ways. Like, it's like some clever ways, some cunning ways. Yeah, there's a lot of those. Now, see, clever I, I ways. like that. That's cool. Of course, I probably would never do it, but you know. <laughs> I got you, and me, you and me both, but it's fun to do those in those little ways, but I always never. Well, I see how this works. It's telling me what I need to make this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, some, uh, some of the recipes that you have right from the start. Uh, this experiment, yeah. do. An experiment is you can put you know like as as, as how you made a ship for example like you can make uh, put there all the ingredients you want and just you know see if maybe you can do something with it. That's cool. I don't think I've got the. Oh, I see what you're saying about the bottles. Maybe I'll try this again. What? There we go. <laughs> I just cannot do this. Just. Oh, I got it. Just here it is. Broken bottle. Broken bottle. <laughs> Classic weapon. You know, when I'm done here with you, I'm going to go back to those rats with this broken <laughs> bottle. Okay, yeah, so that looks great. And then I think we've got, a, like, a mission. Here's our missions. And then where's our, like, our character? Yeah, this. And, uh, oh, yeah. And here we go. You also have, like, like, um... I guess uh, the best equivalent will be perks and pollen. So it's like a perk system, but it doesn't work like in pollen. So uh, every level, so right now you need to have one point to distribute, uh, uh, to get a perk. So, but the next level you will need two points, but you always get only one point with each level. So, you know, it kind of, I guess, uh, sort of like forces you to think about what perks you want for your character. Armor of God. That sounds like pretty good armor. True grit. Like John Wayne style. Yeah, well, okay. you know, we'll, we'll like our references. <laughs> well, okay. 
and that's for the other par party members that you will have. Like you can uh, look at their statistics. How many party members can I have? Uh, right now, I think uh, I think four or five, something like that. Wow. Okay. Well, let me get to those questions from the viewers. Yep. Yeah, sure. Uh, give me a second here to get these pulled up. I had some on uh, Facebook. People are really excited about this game, by the way. I mean, a lot of people that watch this show are, I think it's fair to say, obsessed uh, with Fallout 1 and 2. I mean, really, I don't even know why I keep saying that. Really, if I say Fallout, I, I mean, I could only be talking about the. Sure, the sure. First <laughs> We're not going to mention that latest travesty. Uh, give me one second to get to the questions. Yep. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this was, I've already asked this question, but it was Mark Garnett. So he's the guy that was asking about the, uh, well, here's the part I didn't really ask. Uh, he says, Mark Garnett, he says, how much coding experience do they have before embarking on this project? Uh, so our, our main programmer, uh, Dmitry, he worked uh, for, a, like, I guess, all his career, he worked for a big uh, company. Uh, big game and game development company and uh, all other programmers that we have in the game they're either his uh, uh, colleagues from that job or you know his like uh, not colleagues but his like friends from other big uh, developer studios all right I got a question here from Miko Miko Silva it's a good question I think uh, why does Fallout resonates so well with game developers from Eastern Europe? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. There's, I think there's like a lot of reasons for that. Um, in, in, I guess like maybe there are some like underlying reasons for that, but I can say only for myself and for me, you know, it's just uh, actually like a lot of uh, different, um, uh, not only me, but I think like all of our team, like we love, uh, uh, you know, like uh, different genres of uh, fiction and not only fiction. So uh, like post-apocalyptic genre is not like, you know, like we're not like the biggest fans of apocalyptic genre and we d dislike all other genres. We just kind of, you know, like it's, it's, it's an interesting setting. So that's why we picked it uh, in the first place. But like, I don't know, we'll make that we can make you know, like our next game in fantasy or something like that. <laughs> you know, it doesn't doesn't matter. It's still interesting. Like post-apocalyptic genre, I just, I don't, it's a good question, but I can't, you know, like I can't answer it. Um, I can't give you like a big answer because I don't know. It's very, it's very complicated. <laughs> I, need to, I need to do a little bit of <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, here's one <clears throat> from Snap Snapper. Yeah, Snap Snapper, Snapping Snapper. A snappy, snappy guy. Uh, can you ask them how do they plan to make the Soviet Russian wasteland feel and look distinct from the American wasteland of the Fallout series? I think we've kind of already seen that, really. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Not only really, but also like in uh, characters and stuff like that. So, I don't know. And basically, again, like uh, if, uh, Fallout was uh, more of like the backstory of Fallout was more like uh, science fiction. Uh, it's it's uh, like the world of Atom is actually based on the real world. So yeah. the, the apocalypse was in 86, year 1986. And, you know, before that was, you know, just our general timeline. So it had the Soviet Union, had the... You say it had NATO and you know Cold War and stuff like that, so it, it's not changed. Maybe some, some little tidbits here and there changed just for flavor, but more or less it's 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 our it's our world. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's see. I think there might be. I hope I'm not skipping a question. There's one here from Gotrick. <clears throat> <laughs> it says, "Will this game finally put Fallout 76 to bed?" 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, you know, Atom is very different from Fallout uh, 76, Fallout 3 and uh, 4, that matter. Like, I, 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 I never actually played Fallout 3, so I, <laughs> you know, I can't even speculate if it's a, you know, some people say it's it's a bad game, some people say it's a good game. I don't know. Like, I, I don't think it. it's necessarily a bad game. It's just, to me, yeah. I, I, I still got kind of uh, mixed feelings about it because it's, to me, it's no more like Fallout 1 and 2 than the Brotherhood of Steel that the Fallout Tactics games was. I mean, it's completely different gameplay. It's like the first-person shooter style. <clears throat> and I'm like, we got so many games like that. You know, I would have much preferred... Actually, I would have much preferred something like this. So, you know, I think I said that earlier. This, to me, was... <laughs> and this, even though it's like a different team and everything, a uh, different setting, it, it's, it really feels a lot more like those Fallout games. I mean, even the little bit I've been playing it here, you know, I think everybody would would agree with that. But I didn't mean to step on your answer. <laughs> you're the, no, you're no, the I, designer. I, you, you take it away. <laughs> no, the question was, <laughs> will we put uh, Fallout 76 to bed? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. Not that. <laughs> I think that game is already put to bed. I don't. I don't know what happened. Well, yeah. I just hope it didn't uh, besmirch the whole. Uh... I hope people don't avoid this game because they think, "Oh no, it's another, <laughs> it's another Fallout 76." <laughs> no, 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 like, no, you know, like it already looks <laughs> very different from modern Fallout games. So, yeah, was, uh, we, actually, we, yeah. we actually had a very interesting um, comment from from um, one player who said, "Like, whoa, this is very." This is a very original concept. It's like Fallout, but it's uh, <laughs> top dozen. Like, yeah, original. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love this turn-based combat. Oh, look, I got a shovel now. <laughs> yep, and you just saw yeah. graves here on the location. You have a shovel. You know what to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I love about this. You know, when you, you like putting in some of those adventure game elements, and now you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I said I need a shovel. Now I got the shovel, so now I'm thinking like, I can go back now. Uh, yeah. The same location, dig up. No telling what I'm going to dig up, you know. It's good stuff. Yeah, I just, <clears throat> one of the reviews I wanted to mention, I don't know if you read all those reviews on the, the Steam and all, all that, but I thought it was a really good comment. And they said this is basically the game for the guy that's played Fallout 1 and 2 uh, over and over and over again, you know. And I know guys that play that every year, you know. Every year they'll go back and play the original games again. Uh, but you get tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be nice to have some new, uh, some new games in that style? And this is it. You know, is what that well, review was saying. Not. And I think that's uh, that's just from my experience here. I would agree with that. I mean, is that kind of what well, you're going for? Is that the audience? Or? Um, I guess you know, like the audience, uh, well, like uh, the RPG genre in general. So I guess the audience is more general, like fans of RPGs, but of course, like fans of Fallout. Sure, like <laughs> it's it's understandable, of course. Like it's game inspired, basically by Fallout. Not only by Fallout, of course, but uh, primarily you can. I mean, so it's kind of funny to me that people are coming to this from Fallout uh, Three and Four and uh, New Vegas games like that. And <laughs> like this is nothing like Fallout. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, that was that was I don't know. I won't say eye opening, but that, that was interesting. <laughs> I can actually read that. You can read it. You can actually read it right here. If you try to take it, you know, you, you can see that's like stealing. Oh no! Not, yeah, but you can you can um, if you click on that shelf again, uh, and then uh, I think hold yeah, you can use it. So you can. Oh wow! Yeah, there's like 14 pages in that. Yeah, yeah. We ha we have like. A lot of books. There, there are actually books that have, I think, thirty pages or something like that. Uh, I know that it's <laughs> not everybody's cup of tea, but it's <laughs> believe me, it's man, it's it's not mandatory. You can yeah, if you want, yeah. it, you can read them. If you don't want, no. I like that. I mean, if you want to read it, it's there. It doesn't hurt me if I don't want to read it. I mean, that, that's the key, I think. Yeah. And right. there's actually there's actually in this village there's another book that you can read. And uh, you can actually learn a trade from that, a streetwise trade, so that you can 
uh, in, in in later di use in later dialogues, for example. How do I get this guy to quit looking at me? <laughs> I want to steal everything you got, old man. <laughs> uh, pissed him off. Yeah, probably good to, time to reload. But you actually, if you have if you have kind of sneak skill, you can, you oh, know. Man, how do I sneak? Is that automatic? Uh, it's it's a passive skill. It's a passive skill. Oh, that's yeah. Well, I totally not sneaky. But anyway, Anton, thanks for, for taking the time to show me the game and, and talk about this. Uh, you know, it's on Steam. I don't know if this is on GOG or not. Is it on GOG? Uh, not right now, but uh, we hopefully will be on GOG. Sure, sure. That was one of the ideas. Yeah. And how much is how much is the game right now? I didn't even. Uh, oh, fifteen dollars. Fourteen ninety nine. Fourteen ninety nine. Well, that's a great. That's a great value, guys. I mean, <laughs> wow, that's kind of cheap. I figured you would want to go like thirty bucks. Nah, you know, it's <laughs> it's a passion project. So more people with the play, the better. <laughs> you know. Well, you heard it, folks. Go check it out. Uh, Adam RPG. I'll post a link to it in the show notes, and let me uh, let me and Anton know what you think. I'm sure you'd like to know. Sure, sure. I think it's great, great work. Have lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, and we actually we come out uh, this December at the end of December. So oh, you know, that, like the, is that the really, official the, the launch date? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, all the bugs will be gone completely. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Think it hasn't crashed or anything on me here. I mean, it already yeah. feels a lot more stable than a uh, some of the. <laughs> <laughs> recent games I've played. <laughs> also, December, yes, yeah, so right in time for Christmas. But if you buy, if you buy it now, you're good, though, right? And when the official one comes sure, out. Sure, 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 sure. We want uh, like, uh, there's no like, we want to um, uh, make the prices higher. We want to do all that stuff. Like, it's fourteen ninety nine, and it's fourteen ninety nine in the release. So, and you will receive the game. You know, so. I think my guy's on a Christmas. Is that a Christmas sweater? He's got a little moose on it. Uh, we actually call this uh, this outfit outdoorsman. So like you're wearing a sweater, you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! But the, the, uh, again, like the final release will have um, some other, you know, like uh, skins that you can choose right at the start. So there will be like a like militarist militarist garb and you know like a, a, a shirt and stuff like that. So yeah. Okay, then. Well, I'm going to let you go, and I think I have a date with a couple of rats that need to get well acquainted with my broken bottle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anton. See you later. Good luck. Yep. yep. Good luck. That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week. I'll uh, probably be looking at a game called uh, Aeon, A-E-O-N, if I recall correctly. Uh, a great new uh, blobber-style game, if you will. Uh, and I've been playing a little bit off and on. I think it's worth an episode. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll be even able to get the developer for that on to uh, do another one of these uh, developer slash uh, uh, gameplay videos. I actually have a lot of fun with these. Uh, hopefully uh, you like them, too. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, 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 with a double helping of thanks and maybe even a few little thank you sprinkles on top. Uh, maybe even a little thank you frothing uh, on the beverage there. I mean, I really want to get across uh, how thankful, how grateful I am to you for supporting this show, uh, for keeping the shows in production. Thank you very much for that. Uh, if you want to support the show, you like Matt Chat, want more episodes, more, more, more. Uh, just please go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site. Uh, you can sign up for your own Matt Chat account uh, over at Patreon. You can also do, do the same at pay, uh, PayPal. And I want to mention, too, I'm uh, selling more of these uh, uh, Matt Chat collectible challenge coins. Now, remember, you can get these just by uh, supporting the show. If you get up to 100 bucks, I send you one of these coins. Uh, you do have to remind me, though because I'm not always checking. I don't have an easy way to see who's at that level, but uh, you can check your own Patreon to see uh, where you are. And uh, just let me know, and I'm happy to send you one of these coins for free. Uh, but what I'm saying, if you don't want to wait that long, or you want some extra coins or whatever, uh, just go to the uh, link of the show notes to that uh, eBay site. I'm selling them right now for $20 each, 
and you'll have a nice little treat <laughs> for yourself or a little stocking stuffer for the kids or maybe your wife or and or husband. Uh, they might like these uh, too. But anyway, thank you very much for supporting the show. Now what about that news from the Matt Cave? Yes, there is quite a bit of news. Uh, well, let's start with good old Stig. He wrote in about a couple items. Uh, uh, this is the Blood Remastered Edition. This is coming to us from Night Dive Studios, who we've had on the show a few times. Uh, Atari has announced a remake of the classic PC first-person shooter Blood. Night Dive is, of course, doing it. Uh, let's see if they give any... Ver yeah, here we go. The new version of the game will contain many improvements. Uh, while there's no release date, they are promising it coming in the next... In the coming weeks. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. The new remaster won't apparently change too much. Uh, it will only update the game to provide a, quote, better user experience for contemporary audiences. Whatever that means. Better compatibility with current-gen video and audio hardware, DirectX and Vulkan support. Additional support for modern networks, Steamworks, and GOG Galaxy. The new remaster will be one of the whole one-unit whole blood package, which contains blood and expansion packs. So, so basically, if you like blood or you, if you like classic first-person shooter games, and I mean, I know most of you guys do, uh, check that out. There'll be a link in the show notes for you to follow up on this. And he also wanted me, uh, Stig that is, wanted me to uh, send a shout out uh, to the Sierra Adventure book. He says, Matt, it would be cool if you gave this one a shout out on your channel. This guy is one of the Quest for Infamy developers. I dare say it's your kind of book. And so I was trying to learn more about this book. Uh, apparently it, it's, a, yeah, this is according to the page, 130,000 words. There will be a Kickstarter, but it will be small. And so basically, he has uh, written a lot about the Sierra, classic Sierra adventure games. He's interviewed over 50 people, all different areas of the company. And it's going to be a lot of uh, insider knowledge as well as his uh, position. Fortunately, I can't even figure out who it is. I looked all over the damn page. I can't even find the name of the author. It's kind of sad. I really needs to make that clearer. Uh, but anyway, it looks like a great project, especially if you are, of course, a fan of those Sierra games. So I thought I'd go ahead and mention that. And post a link to that as well in the show notes. All right, let's see what else. Oh, yeah, this is really good. This is from Indie Retro Games. Uh, they've posted a link to Operencia, The Stolen Sun, a modern homage to class, uh, classic first-person dungeon crawlers to get a trailer. Uh, gather your party, pick up your weapons, venture into the lands of Operencia. Uh, as the developer Zen Studios just released a brand new trailer for this upcoming retro game. Uh, looks really cool. It's based on uh, Central European folklore. Uh, so go check that out. I think it looks really promising. I'm looking forward to playing it. And then finally, uh, Gotrick wanted me to talk about this. This is a game called Hell Raid. It's a dark fantasy action game from Techland, the company behind Dying Light Dead Island. Hell Raid is a first-person hack-and-slash game set in a dark fantasy universe based on medieval European folklore. Featuring three distinct game modes that can be played in both single-player and two-to-four player co-op. Hellraid, a unique blend of dynamic FPP combat and hack-and-slash elements coming soon to PC and less relevant platforms. <laughs> so, uh, go check that out. Uh, and then finally, I do have an update on the book, uh, Dungeons and Desktops 2.0. I got a message from the publisher today. Uh, he's saying that that is expected next May. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, uh, I highly encourage you to go buy uh, Vintage Games 2.0. It's a wonderful book. I know you'll enjoy this. It's available at Amazon and all the other booksellers. Of course, there's uh, Vintage Game Consoles as well. Uh, but either one of those, you really can't go wrong. If you like the show, you like video game history, maybe you're looking for a gift for somebody that doesn't watch the show. And, you know, maybe you just want to sit down with a book sometimes, right? So, you know, I put a lot of work into these books. I know you'll like them, so please uh, <laughs> check them out. And if you do like them, uh, consider posting a review on Amazon for me. That makes a huge difference. All right, well, I've uh, worked up quite a thirst, so what can I do about it? Well, let me tell you what I can do about that. I have the second entry in this Gravity Well series. Now, you might recall from last episode, 
Uh, I have this one. This is the bourbon barrel aged. This time, I have the cognac barrel aged gravity well. And this is an Insight Brewing, same company you get, 2018 uh, reserved. And they told me at the store today that these are the only ones they're making. So it's kind of a limited time deal. So I don't know if you'll ever be able to get this again. Uh, it is brewed out of uh, Minneapolis. Uh, so I don't know what kind of distribution they have. Uh, so, you know, I guess your mileage may vary. You might get lucky and find this somewhere, but you might have to come to Minnesota. <laughs> uh, let's see. I wonder if that, is that the same story as on this one? Yeah, it's the same story about the rocket ship. Uh, so I'll just skip that. Uh, go ahead and open this up. I have to say I'm not, I haven't really drink, uh, dr <laughs> drunken? Uh, drunk much cognac. You know, more of a bourbon guy. I really don't even know the difference. <laughs> uh, so I just have to see what this is like. I might turn out to like the cognac better. But uh, anyway, I like the first one so much, I really wanted to try the uh, the second one. So go ahead and get this Gravity Well cognac barrel-aged uh, bottle open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Gravity Well, oh, sorry, <laughs> Gravity Well cognac barrel-aged. Ah, here in the rather excellent drinking horn. Ah, that just smells absolutely fantastic. It's maybe even a little bit sweeter than that uh, bourbon barrel aged in terms of aroma. Just a really lovely uh, cherry-like flavor on that. A very uh, light... Um, what am I looking for? It's kind of like a, maybe almost a floral, uh, like aroma to this. Uh, it just smells really, really good. No unpleasant fumes or anything like that uh, coming off of this. Uh, just, you smell it, you want to taste it. So let's give it a taste. <laughs> uh, well, I think this one might be a little bit stronger than that bourbon. A lot of intense flavor going down there. A lot of, uh, uh, you definitely taste the cognac, I suppose. It's got that sort of smoky, a lot of cherry flavor. Uh, very, very sweet. Uh, maybe a little bit bitter, more bitter uh, than the previous one. A little bit of a grapefruit-like uh, taste to that. Uh, I'll try it again here. Yeah, this one, uh, you know, I got to say, I probably don't like this one as much as the bourbon. Uh, it's a little bit more bitter. It's about the same level of a consistency. It kind of lingers a little while in your in your in your throat. Uh, it's not bad. I'll try it one more time here. Yeah, uh, this one. To me, I don't really. I think it's a little a little too bitter for my taste. You kind of taste the uh, uh, whatever kind of uh, barrels they age these in the cognac. I suppose it's a little more smoky uh, flavor. Uh, some people might actually like that better, but I think I prefer the bourbon barrel uh, to this. Uh, still really, really good, but I think I'm probably going to go... Uh, I'm, it's very close to five, but I'll go ahead and go four out of five uh, drinking horns on this one. Uh, personally, I prefer the uh, bourbon barrel aged. Uh, but this one's not bad. Uh, just a little, a little bit more bitter, a little more challenging uh, to drink, if you will. And I still have one more in this series. Hopefully, I'll be able to get that on next time. They've got an oak barrel aged. And I could try that out and, and see how it compares to the other uh, two. Uh, anyway, really, really a solid choice. Uh, just maybe not as good as the bourbon, but still uh, very drinkable. Uh, so four out of five for the Gravity Well Cognac Barrel Aged. All right, so let's wrap it up with a quote. And I was looking for quotes by Russians. I came across one, of course, uh, by Leo Tolstoy, a Russian novelist. I'm pretty sure you know who he is. He's written a bunch of great books. Uh, but anyway, I thought this quotation just really knocked it, out the, knocked it out of the park. I think you'll like it. It goes something like this. To say that a work of art is good, but incomprehensible to the majority of men, is the same as saying of some kind of food that it is very good, but that most people can't eat it. So ponder on that and see you guys next time.
place here in the Shane Please Geek Talk radio show and podcast. Matt, the King Rat himself, has graciously offered to uh, let me tell you about the Shane Plays 20 Days of Christmas that's going on right now. All you have to do is keep an eye on Twitter, on my Twitter account, which is Shane Plays, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. Every day, I'm sending out a tweet uh, giving away a free Steam key for games. Uh, of, of era, some, of, some of them are indie games. Some of them are uh, more well-known titles. Anyway, all the games are good. All the games are free to you. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is retweet that tweet or tweet back at me. Uh, entries are good up until midnight central time each day. Next day, I pick a winner randomly and then do another one all the way up through Christmas Day. So that is Shane Plays, 20 Days of Christmas. Check it out. Make sure to follow Shane Plays, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. 